Have you ever wondered how some speakers manage to control sound so precisely, even in challenging spaces? Today, we're going to explore the theory behind the Dutch and Dutch 8C and KII3 speakers. These speakers use advanced techniques to control directivity, and while their design is really complicated, we can start to grasp the concepts with hard work and practice. Our goal is to break it down in the simplest way possible so you can understand the core principles and how they achieve such impressive sound control. Let's dive into it. Watch this video carefully. In it, a man measures the sound pressure at the front side of a speaker. The reading shows about minus 25 dB, based on the calibration of his device. As he walks around the speaker, the sound pressure gradually decreases until he reaches the rear side. At the rear, the sound pressure becomes significantly weaker, dropping by 20 dB. But what's the purpose of this reduction? Imagine we have two drivers, each housed in a separate enclosure and positioned at a specific distance from one another. Let's focus on the first driver. When it plays a frequency like 500 Hz, the sound radiates equally in all directions, a phenomenon known as omnidirectional propagation. The downside of omnidirectional propagation is that it leads to a high level of room reflections. As a result, our ears perceive a mix of reflections instead of a clean, direct sound. Now, what happens if we reduce the sound in a specific direction? The result is fewer reflections and greater fidelity to the original sound, allowing us to hear a clearer, more direct signal. At 500 Hz, the wavelength is 0.686 meters. If we place the second driver at a distance of one quarter of this wavelength from the first, the sound wave produced by the second driver will arrive with a delay equivalent to one quarter of the wavelength. In the graph, the blue curve represents the response from the front driver, while the green curve represents the response from the rear driver. The resulting curve, shown in red, is the combined response of both drivers. Notice that the rear driver introduces a delay equivalent to a quarter wavelength or 90 degrees phase delay, as evident in the graph. Now, let's consider the rear side of the drivers. In this case, the sound wave propagated by the first driver arrives with a delay equivalent to one quarter of the wavelength. Note that in the right hand graph, the blue curve is further behind, while in the left hand graph, the green curve is further behind. If we apply an electronic delay to the first driver, matching this delay one quarter of the wavelength, something interesting happens. The rear wave is cancelled out while the front wave is reinforced, effectively doubling its amplitude. Through simple calculations, this doubling results in a 6 dB increase in the sound level of the front wave. Let's test a different frequency with this setup. For example, consider 1000 Hz. The previous distance results in cancellation on both sides, because the distance introduces a delay that is twice the previous 90 degrees, equal to 180 degrees. Applying the same electronic delay as before will now amplify the sound on both the front and rear sides. From this observation, we can conclude that this setup effectively works for frequencies up to the point where the wavelength is four times the distance between the drivers. But the story doesn't end here. I'll introduce a simple technique to remove the rear wave using an easy to understand theory. These theories are straightforward to apply in practice, and I encourage you to try the setup with your own speakers. Use equalizer APO to apply a delay to one driver, ensuring both sources have the same volume. Then, experiment with different volumes and delays. You'll notice how easily the sound position changes. Thanks for watching.